Right, hello everyone. I want to take a quick look at Marathon Digital here and look at some quick technical analysis and why it makes sense and why there are certain things you should pay attention to and there are certain things that in my opinion you shouldn't pay attention to. Now technical analysis has a bad reputation but frankly it kind of deserves it. Most of these most technicians that I see don't really know what they're talking about and these include people that are pretty prominent as well as people that are just regular retail traders. In other words, they look at charts, <clears throat> they kind of mindlessly look for patterns, but they don't really understand what these patterns illustrate. <clears throat> if a chart is viewed the right way, it should be viewed through the prism of what does this tell us about supply and demand and what does it tell us about psychology? Pretty simple. If you understand these principles, there are certain principles, you don't need to memorize the names of the patterns and so forth and so on. All right, whatever, let's just take a look at this here. So there's a couple things I wanna show you here. One is, it's a very common thing in financial markets for a level that was support to convert into resistance. Then the level that was resistance to convert into support. See, this level, $9, support here, resistance here, support here. What is resistance? When a market's moving higher, there's not enough supply to fill all the demand, or there's not enough sellers to fill the, the buy orders of all the buyers. But when we get to resistance level, things change. All of a sudden, there is enough supplier, there are enough sellers around that the buyers can buy all they need to. When a market's moving higher, it's because the buyers are forced to pay premiums. There's not enough sellers around, so they got to pay premiums. When we get to resistance, that changes. They can buy all they want. Support is the opposite. When a market's moving lower, there's not enough demand or buy orders to absorb all of the supply or sell orders. When we get to a support level, it's high turns. For whatever reason, this is where the buyers get very active and they can take in all of the shares that are for sale and the sellers don't need to push the price any lower. When the market's trending lower, it's because sellers can't find enough demand or buyers, so they're forced to sell it at a discount. This forces a downtrend. Now, why would a level that was support convert into resistance? Why would a level that's resistance convert into support? This has to do with psychology. Support levels can become resistance because of buyer's remorse. There are people who bought here who regret doing so when the price went lower and they tell themselves, I made a mistake, I wanna get out, but I don't wanna lose any money. So I'm gonna wait for this, the, wait for the price to get back to where I paid and then I'm gonna sell so I get out of break even. So if you have enough remorseful buyers placing sell orders at a level that was support, Support can convert into resistance, all right? Now, why would resistance convert into support? Well, this is the opposite. This is seller's remorse. People sold, and when the price moves higher, a lot of the investors who sold regret doing so. They tell themselves, I made a mistake. I'm going to buy my shares back, but I'm only going to do so if I can get them for the same price I sold them at. So if you have enough remorseful sellers placing buy orders at the level that was resistance, resistance can convert into support, all right? So remember... Buyer's remorse can turn support into resistance. Seller's remorse can turn resistance into support. We see this on a lot of charts, regardless of the security. ETFs, stocks, cryptos, you name it. Why is it important to know? Well, if a market's trending higher and say you got a position and you're making money and you're wondering, hmm, where should I sell this? Well, if you look into the past and you find a level that had been previously support or resistance, there's a good chance there's gonna be resistance there again. So that would make a, logical place to have a sell or place your sell order or, or that would be your target. The best traders let the market tell them what to do. They don't guess. How does the market talk to us? Well, by how it acts when it gets to these price levels. Now, why would something bounce off of support? Once again, psychology. There's investors who are watching this thing come lower and lower and they tell themselves, I'm going to buy this, but I'm just going to wait for the right price. Then all of a sudden they notice it's not going down anymore. So they deduce that there are other investors coming into the market that are buyers. That's why the price isn't going any lower. Some of these investors start to get nervous and get anxious that they're going to miss out on buying, that there's someone who's going to be willing to pay a higher price. So they pay their a higher price as well. The sellers are going to go to who's ever willing to pay the highest price. So it becomes a snowball effect of these anxious buyers jumping in front of each other and we get these bounces. Get the support bounce, bounce. Why would something sell off when it gets to resistance? It's the opposite. People are watching, they're waiting to sell. 
all of a sudden, some of these investors notice the price isn't going up anymore. They logically deduce that there are sellers coming to the market. They're afraid they're going to miss out because the buyers are going to go to whoever has the lowest price. So they start to undercut each other and you get these sell offs. OK, when markets get to support or resistance, they tend to reverse or break through. They don't tend to hang out there for too long. Now, if you're a trader, this is the type of stuff you look for. X, Y, Z is at support. There's a good chance it bounces. A, B, C is at resistance. There's a good chance it sells off. We trade around the levels, all right? In the institutional world, this is what we do. We trade around the levels. We realize that some levels are more important than others, and we act accordingly. Now, another thing. I don't really pay attention to too many patterns, but if you understand the principles, you don't have to say this is this pattern or this is that pattern. Two things that make a lot of sense are the descending triangle and the ascending triangle. Why is that? Well, a descending triangle illustrates aggressive sellers and complacent buyers. It's a graphical illustration. Buyers are okay with chilling down here around nine, around nine dollars, and they're basically like, all right, well, if the sellers come to us, we'll buy. If not, we don't really care. So we're just going to hang out. So they're kind of complacent. At the same time, as time is going by, you can see that the, 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 these peaks. This peak formed at a lower price than this peak. That forms this descending triangle pattern. This shows us that as time is going by, the sellers are getting more aggressive. So we have aggressive sellers, complacent buyers. Doesn't matter what the market is, you got aggressive sellers and complacent buyers. There's a good chance it goes lower. The ascending triangle is the exact opposite. We got the sellers now are complacent. The sellers are okay with just waiting and chilling around $9. And they say, if the buyers come to us, we'll sell. If not, whatever, I'm cool with waiting. I'm going to be patient. At the same time, as time is passing, buyers are becoming more aggressive. They're willing to pay higher prices. Notice how instead of having lower highs, we have higher lows. So ascending triangles illustrate aggressive buyers and complacent sellers. That sets the stage for a move higher. And as you can see, we made a, from a percentage uh, terms, we made a huge move higher. So this, these two patterns each played out really like textbook, I guess you would say, just as uh, traditional technical analysis would teach. Now, what do we have here? Another descending triangle is starting to form. The buyers are hanging out around nine, but as time is passing from April to where we are now, there's been this series of lower highs. This tells us that the sellers are getting more aggressive. Uh, aggressive sellers, complacent buyers, sets the stage for a move lower. All right, to sum up, if you look at a chart correctly, it should be an illustration of supply and demand dynamics and market psychology. Market psychology, buyer's remorse turns support into resistance. Market psychology, seller's remorse turns resistance into support. Descending triangle shows aggressive sellers and complacent buyers. Ascending triangle shows complacent sellers, aggressive buyers. So that's it, everybody. Doesn't need to be that complicated. Just keep it simple. And uh, thank you for checking out stockmarketjobber.com here. Please sign up for our YouTube page or follow us on YouTube. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.